Welcome to Politics and Psychology. I'm Dr. Renee Carr, and please introduce yourself in the chat or on social media. So how are you doing today, my fellow change makers and critical thinkers? I hope you're having a great day, and I might sound a little nasally or congested today because I am slightly under the weather, but I'm a lot better than what I was last week. So please bear with me. And hopefully my voice will still sound clear enough for you to hear. So today we're talking about how sexual preference is not a legal right. And for this to not be a one-sided or a one-time conversation, please also give your thoughts or questions in the comments section below. As we discuss how sexual preference is not a legal right, let's understand that sexual preference is a sexual preference. This means that who you decide to have sex with, how you decide to have sex, for example, if you have a sexual fetish, if you prefer to only have oral sex, if you prefer to have sex with your same sex, if you prefer to have sex once a week, it doesn't really matter. That's your sexual preference. As long as you are are a consenting adult having sex with another consenting adult, that is your sexual preference. When you try to make a sexual preference a legal right or a right that has to be respected by other people, we have a situation in our society where a group which may have same-sex preferences, specifically the LGBTQ community, having sexual preferences and gender dysphoria or gender identity confusion that in a way to protect themselves as being seen as real people, they are then pushing for, and others are also in alliance with pushing for making sexual preference a legal right. When you have this approach, however, you have the risk of creating a situation of a society where whatever you decide sexually whatever you prefer sexually, then becomes a legal right. And if your legal right goes against someone else's legal right, then it is getting closer to erring on if you have any sex other than heterosexual sex, the rights of heterosexual individuals are being less protected and more infringed upon than those who are having non-heterosexual sex. So think about it on a psychological level. If you are already experiencing personal rejection, personal confusion, depression, suicidal thoughts, it's understandable where you are already having a psychological experience that is very harmful and hurtful and where you want to receive the love that you are entitled to receive. This is everyone's right as a human. And if your way of trying to reconcile those, which is called cognitive dissonance. If I can make myself feel better about the confusion I'm experiencing, if I can make myself feel better than about loving myself for how I experience my sexual preferences or sexual confusion about my identity or sexual preferences, or even how I'm reconciling sexual trauma and then choosing a sexual preference that doesn't trigger memories of sexual trauma. If your way of reconciling that is within your own self, choosing sexual preferences that are based off of whatever is more physically or psychologically comfortable for you, that's what you are choosing. But then if you then push to then have legislation being pushed to just protect those thoughts that are often coming from a place of hurt, then you are protecting yourself You're reinforcing a cushion of protection around you, but it's happening happening in a way that is then, again, pushing back on the rights and comforts of others. But before we continue, let's go into what are human rights? What are the rights of humans, period? So there are three types of rights. We have, there's actually four. We're only going to talk about three of those today, though. We have human rights, legal rights, and civil rights. And the fourth is moral rights. But again, we're only talking about human, legal, and civil rights for today. So human rights are the universal rights that anyone can enjoy, such as sexuality, sexual pleasure as an adult. 
And I'm emphasizing as an adult because children are not psychologically or physically able to readily enjoy the beauty and blessings of orgasms and sexual pleasure in a way that's not going to be harmful for them in the long run. So human rights are the universal rights that anyone, any adult can enjoy and are not given by governments when it comes to the human right of sexual pleasure. So these are human rights that exist even if there is no government. Human rights are those that are inherent to all human beings, regardless of age, regardless of gender, regardless of nationality, ethnicity, or any other distinction such as religion or religious preference. Human rights contribute to ensuring that every human being is able to live without discrimination from any other human being. But it's the protection and the recognition of these human rights that will vary from country to country. This is where we have legal rights. So human rights are supposed to be protected by the state and the national government in which that person is a citizen. Unlike human rights, which are meant to be available to all humans, legal rights are those rights and protections that are given by the laws in that state or country, and which means that as a law, they can then be modified, repealed, or restrained, and even by the same laws. So the difference between human rights and legal rights is that human rights are universal and they are timeless. The human right that you have today in 2022, if that's when you're listening to this, is the same human right that you would have had in 1 AD or 1000 AD. So these are human rights that are universal, that go through all of humanity and are timeless. And they are not formulated, created, or based upon laws or statutes created by a human government. Some of these human rights include the right to education and the enjoyment of benefits of cultural freedom and scientific progress. You also have the right to work in a just and favorable condition. You have the right to social protection, to adequate standards of living. You have the right to have high standards of physical and mental well-being or physical and mental health, which means you would have the right to have access to health care. Your experience of human rights that are universal to all people may depend upon the economic status of that country, but it does not mean that as time goes on, the human rights will be changed because as your country, as our civilizations advance, become more technologically savvy, become more scientifically beneficial for the health and wellness of each citizen, then those rights will just expand but the basis will still be the same. These rights are rights that everyone should have. This is different from a legal right. So legal rights are not universal and they can vary from person to person and they can and often do vary from state to state and also from nation to nation. The civil rights refer to legal provisions that stem from the beliefs and practices of equality. So they all link together, but the legal part of it comes into what laws are supporting the human rights with the available resources that we have as a state, as a country, and what are these legal rights? How are these being supported for your human rights and then for your civil rights? Whenever you have discrimination, it's because you have civil rights of an individual being denied or interfered with because of that individual's membership in a particular group. So when you look at civil rights and you look at discrimination, these civil rights are enforceable rights or a privilege. And if, again, if they're interfered with, then you can then be sued by the individual, by the business or by the entity, or likewise, you can sue that individual, that person or business or entity. Um, the most prominent civil rights legislation since the Reconstruction era and the Reconstruction era was the main legislation aimed to end slavery for African-Americans. So after that, the next biggest piece of legislation was the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And this, in the beginning, it included prohibiting individuals from being discriminated against, against their civil rights based on race, color, 
religion, or national origin. In the beginning, it did not include anything about sex. And so that was when we had Title VII, which was introduced as an amendment, and it included sex. In around 2011 with President Obama, he added in an executive order, 11478, which prohibited discrimination based on sexual orientation by federal employers and federal contractors. This again included sexual orientation, meaning sexual preference, who you choose to have sex with. And I'm emphasizing again, adults having sex with other adults. Many of these policies and issues in the executive order were rolled back under President Trump's administration. And then with President Biden's new administration, he has taken steps to try to restore the rights that were limited by the Trump administration. Specifically, he also issued an executive order on preventing discrimination on the basis of gender identity or sexual orientation. We have the Equality Act that was passed by the U.S. House of Representatives in 2021. That was only last year. And in this act, it allows individuals who do identify as trans individuals, meaning biologically born one sex or one gender, and then believing that they are born in a different body and then having surgeries or just wearing outside clothing to represent who they experience themselves on the inside. And that Equality Act is allowing people, if passed by the Senate, it's allowing them to then go into bathrooms or go into places where they feel as if well, this is my identity that I identify with for my gender, and therefore I should go into this bathroom. So when we focus so much on equality and diversity and inclusion to the point of we're having the rights of one set of humans superseding the rights of another group of humans, and when that difference can cause irreparable harm the other way, they were really not having a balanced approach to truly understanding one, the psychopathology of individuals experiencing gender dysphoria or gender identity confusion, or the sometimes psychological or social pushes to promote sexual promiscuity or to promote being fluid sexually with your preferences. If you're focusing so much on that, that you then discount the human rights and human safety of individuals who are heterosexual, then you're making it where just because you're not a heterosexual, you now have more rights and more protections, including the bathrooms that you go into, you are allowed to have a higher sense of safety and a higher sense of legal protection than the individuals who don't have those conditions or who don't have those sexual preferences. And it's not healthy and it's not appropriate. And it's causing a deterioration in society of being able to protect the basic human rights of all humans to live in safety. So when we continue this conversation, when we have the opportunity to vote for or against legislation that goes against any human right, Let's consider all humans in that. If you say, okay, well, sexual preference, we are now going to vote for it to be a legal right. We're then opening the door to, well, it's my sexual preference to rape women because that's how I get off and that's how I have my biggest orgasms. And that's one adult who is now saying my sexual preference is this. And therefore, because it's a sexual preference that is now having statutes or precedent set it set legally where I can have my sexual preference protected, then now rape will become legal or it will become very murky on, well, did she really want it or did she not really want it? Or was this a sex game that they were playing? And even if it was, well, we can't go against his right. Similarly, and you of course know I'm going to get into this with pedophilia. If you're saying, okay, well, it's your right to have a sexual attraction to children and infants and toddlers, and therefore it's your sexual preference. If we get into it's your right to have whatever your sexual preference is to become a legal right, then that legal right 
only creates a big black hole of then all sexual preferences being legally protected, even when those sexual preferences infringe upon the safety, the psychological and physical and medical well-being of other individuals, or even in the social and physical safety, such as in the bathrooms, in conditions such as the locker rooms or wherever there is an opportunity for one person to be harmed by another person. So this is not to say that all persons experiencing non-heterosexual sex are deviant aggressors and rapists. It's not saying that at all because there's not one size fits all for anything. But it is important to say that just because there is an experience of sexual preference that goes against the natural norm of science, we should not protect or reinforce going against the norms of science when it comes to sexuality, but we should protect all individuals, regardless of sexual preference, to feel loved, be accepted, to be affirmed, and to be encouraged to be the greatness of who they are. But if we do it so much that we are sacrificing the rights of others to also feel the same, then we are only creating apples and then changing that for a case of bad apples. That's just a very brief overview of sexual preference not being a legal right and the dangers of making sexual preference a legal right. Just as an aside, I was looking at legislation in Maryland um, last week, and they're talking about bestiality, which is the sexual preference for having sex with animals. And so if some of these laws are being passed, the only, I think the restriction was you couldn't have an animal's genitalia in your mouth. So obviously not performing anal sex or oral sex with an animal, but it still was allowing some levels of bestiality to occur as a quote, sexual preference. So if we are getting so much into a society of pleasure where any sexual pleasure goes, any sexual preference goes, even if it goes against the safety, as I said, of others, and even if it goes to de- you know, degrading or deteriorating our safeties for all individuals in society, then we're doing significantly much more harm than good. And it may not happen in this generation where raping women, raping children is normalized, but the way that we're focusing on legislation and the push for all of these legislations to promote and pre- um, protect sexual identity, the mutilation of children, sexualizing children, believing that any preference for sexuality should go, which is why you have so many letters being added to the LGBTQIA+. Like it just keeps adding on and on and on because people are being encouraged to accept and to promote sexual preferences regardless of what it is. And if you're being pushed to sex, um, pushed to promote and pushed to accept all of these sexual preferences, then it won't be long into we also have to then say, okay, well, we have a created such a precedence that all sexual preferences can be protected legally that we now can't go, can't even go back and say, well, wait a minute, maybe we've gone too far because then you would have harmed a significant amount of people. And as a psychologist, I understand that there are hurting people who are experiencing confusion and depression and anger and they might have experienced a trauma, which makes it easier to have the human right to enjoy sexual pleasure, to enjoy orgasm. And if you had been raped by your father, if you're a female, then of course you may not want to have penal intercourse. It may be easier to accept the softer love of a woman. That's understandable psychologically and for wellness. That's understandable for trauma treatment. But it doesn't mean that hormonal imbalances traumas and the social sexualization of young children is the means to then promote, well, now we can just have sex with anyone at any time for any reason. So again, that's just a short analysis of the social implications of sexual preferences being pushed for legislation or being pushed for legal rights. And that was a very 
small conversation from just me, but I'm really interested in hearing your opinions and your comments in the comment section below. And although this ends our time for today, please remember to continue this conversation, but doing so using science and love. And if you run